InDesign newsletter templates are great to have on hand when you or your clients want to let customers know about news or even new products that you might have. This is a great strategy if you want to bring awareness to your business and elevate sales. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create a newsletter template in InDesign. By using color swatches, paragraph styles, and a flexible grid, you will be able to edit this template quickly and easily. All you need for this tutorial is this group of images and this font called Vistol. You can install the font by dragging the files into Fontbook. Find the link to download these assets on the description box below and it will take you to the Envato Elements website. Envato Elements offers a variety of creative assets for designers and new resources are constantly added to the Envato Elements library each week. So you might be able to find something for your next project, um, so check it out. All right, so let's get started. Let's open InDesign and create a new document here. Select print and for this tutorial, we will create an A4 newsletter. Change this into centimeters. And let's name the file monthly newsletter template. Set the pages to four. Make sure that you have facing pages checked. Set the columns to six and the column gutter to 0.5 centimeters. Let's create a margin of two centimeters all around. Set the bleed to 0.3 and click create. Awesome. So here we can see that we have six columns and that will make our newsletter template a lot more flexible. Let's set the workspace to typography so we can all start with the same layout. Now head over to the layers panel. If you don't have it open, head over to window layers, double click on layer one to change the name. And this will be our background layer. Click OK. Add a new layer, double click on layer two and rename this to copy. Click OK and let's add one more. And this will be our images layer. We can lock these layers here and that will help when we're arranging our elements. Now let's open the swatches panel, head over to window, click color swatches. I am going to select all of these colors, click on the last one, hold shift, and then click on the first one and delete. Add a new color swatch, double click, and this will be our cream color. Set the values to five, five, and 10. And click OK. Add a new color swatch, double click and change the values to 0, 80, 90 and click OK. Add one last color swatch, this will be blue and set this to 100, 0, 0, 55 and click OK. Good, now we're ready to start the typography side of this tutorial. Head over to Window, Styles, character styles to open the character styles panel. Create a new character style, double click and set the style name to drop cap. A drop cap is a large capital letter at the beginning of a text paragraph. And it usually takes about two, three or four lines of text. This is something decorative that you would use to mark the beginning of a section. And this will be great to mark the beginning of a story on a newsletter. Select the basic character formats option from the left side menu. Set the font family to Vistol Sans, the font style to extra bold, and the size to nine points. Head over to the character color and set the color to orange. And we're done, click OK. Now it's time to create paragraph styles. Head over to Window, Styles, Paragraph Styles. InDesign Paragraph Styles contain many formatting options that you can give to characters in long form paragraphs. These are time savers because they can simplify the way you work and can help you create a very consistent and professional layout. For this tutorial, we'll create nine paragraph styles that will help us structure the newsletter template. So if you'd like to see a list of these styles with the specifics, head over to the written tutorial linked below. All right, so click on create new style, double click on paragraph style and set the style name to front page TOC number. TOC stands for table of contents. 
click on Reset to Base, head over to the Basic Character Formats option from the left side menu, set the font family to Vistal Sans, font style regular, and size to 12 points. Select the character color, set the color to orange, and click OK. Add a new paragraph style, set the style name to front page TOC content. Under Based on, select No Paragraph Style, click on Reset to Base, select the basic character formats, font family Vistol Sans, font style regular, size 8 points, and click OK. Add a new paragraph style, this will be called Headline, based on No Paragraph Style, and here we will see the style settings change. Since we want to keep the same font, we won't press reset to base and we will change the font style to black. Set the size to 39 points, lighting to 42, and tracking to minus 10. Select the character color option from the left side menu, select the blue swatch and click OK. Add a new paragraph style, double click, set the style name to intro, click on based on no paragraph style and this time we will reset to base. And you will see that the style settings description goes back to the initial format. Set the font family Vistol Sans, font style light, size to 16 points, lighting to 17.2, and tracking to minus 10. Character color orange, click OK. Add a new style, double click, set the name to sidebar, based on no paragraph style, reset to base, and let's set again Vistol Sans. Font style black, size 17 points, lighting 20.4 points, and set the character color to paper. Click OK. Add a new style, double click, set the style name to drop cap, based on no paragraph style, reset to base, font family Vistol Sans, font style regular, size 9 points, select drop caps and nested styles. Set the lines to 4, characters to 1, and under character style, select drop cap. This is the character style that we created previously. Click OK. Add a new paragraph style. Set the name to copy. Based on no paragraph style, reset to base. Let's set it to our font. Font style regular, size 9 points. Select the indents and spacing option from the left side menu and set the first line indent to 0.5 centimeters. Click OK. We're almost done. So create a new paragraph style, double click, set the name to folio page number. Based on no paragraph style, let's reset this to make sure that we're starting from the beginning. Font family Vistol Sans, font style medium, size 8 points, and click OK. And the last one. Set the name to folio, section title, based on no paragraph style, reset to base, font style Vistol Sans, font style medium, and size 11 points. And click OK. I know this seems like a lot of work to add styles, but this will really, really help to easily edit the newsletter template in the future. Now we're ready to set up master pages. Head over to the pages panel if you don't have it open. Go to Window, Pages. Double click on A Master. And here we will set up our page numbers and our section titles so all of our pages are the same. Zoom into the left bottom corner of the left page. With the text tool, create a text frame. Right click, head over to Insert Special Character, Markers, Current Page Number. Add an M space by pressing Shift, Command M and then you can add the name of your company. Double click on the points to make the text frame smaller and open the paragraph styles panel. Select the folio page number, press T on your keyboard and head over to the options bar. Set the character style from drop cap to none. Let's zoom out and multiply this by pressing shift option and drag towards the right. Let's zoom in. Copy the page number from the left side to the right side and add an M space in between by pressing Shift Command M. Perfect. Select all the text by pressing Command A, head over to the options bar and click on the Align to the Right button. Now let's add a stroke. 
select the line tool from the toolbar and draw a stroke from margin to margin right above the folio. Set the stroke weight to 0.5 points. Select apply none to the field color. Select the stroke and press shift option and drag towards the right side. Now select both of the strokes. Press shift option and drag towards the top. Maybe let's bring this down just a touch so that way the text can go right down to the margin and the same with the top. Select both text frames, press shift option and drag up. And here we will modify the contents of the text frame to section title. Open the paragraph styles panel and select folio section title. Let's delete this one and duplicate this section title. Let's just make the text frame a touch longer. Select the right text frame and select the align to the right button. Let's zoom out. Select all of the elements on both pages. Head over to the layers panel and let's move the elements from the images layer to the copy layer. Double click on page one and we can start designing the cover of the newsletter. Press shift command and select the top stroke and the section title to overwrite these items and delete. On the layers panel, select the background layer, create a rectangle, head over to the swatches panel, set the stroke to none and the fill to the cream swatch. Lock the background layer and select the copy layer. Using the text tool, create a text frame at the top of the page. Here we will put newsletter. Set the font to Vistol Sans Black and the size to 95 points. On the swatches panel, select the blue swatch. And let's center the word in between the margins. Press W to get a preview of the project. Duplicate the text frame, shift option, drag down. Change the font style to bold and the size to 10 points. And write your company newsletter in capitals. Let's make the text frame smaller by uh, double clicking on the corner point. Press J on your keyboard and head over to the swatches panel to change the color of the text to black. Duplicate the text frame by pressing shift option and drag towards the right and here we will add the date. Align this text to the right. We'll make this frame slightly bigger so that way the user can add their own information. Select both text frames, change the tracking to 60 so there's a little bit more space in between the letters. Using the line tool, create two strokes over and under the company newsletter and the date. Set the stroke weight to 0.5 points. On the layers panel, select the images layer, lock the copy layer, with the rectangle tool, click on the document and create a rectangle that measures 17 centimeters by 18 centimeters. Click OK. Let's place this on the page. Select it and press Command D to place an image. Select the two monks image. Using the direct selection tool, move the image inside the frame and resize it to 63%. Let's move this to the left a little bit. That looks better. Using the text tool, create a text box under the image. Press Command B to open the text frame options window. Set the number of columns to 4 and the gutter to 0.5 centimeters. Click OK. In this frame, you can add a small table of contents by placing the page number at the top, followed by an article in a description. So double click to activate the text frame, right click, fill with placeholder text, open the paragraph styles panel and select the front page TOC content. Head over to the options bar and set the character style to none. Command A on the text frame to select all of the text and select the align to the center button. We'll make this fake text just a little bit smaller Let's add a number and on the paragraph styles panel, we can choose the front page TOC number. Let's center align this. 
Command A to select the text. Head over to the top and select the paragraph option. Uncheck hyphenate. And copy and paste this to fill up the rest of the text frame. We'll quickly change the numbers here. Duplicate the stroke by pressing Shift, Command, and drag down. Place the stroke under the image. We can include a headline and select the font style to medium or bold. Let's copy and paste this here. Perfect. To add more definition to the columns, duplicate the stroke, shorten it, rotate it, and place in between each one of the columns. Let's bring this up. Perfect. And you've got your cover. Now let's work on the inside pages. Double click on page two and press shift command on the section title. Change the section name to explore this month. So here we will create an article on the first four columns and then leave a sidebar on the right side. Using the text tool, create a text frame that covers four columns. Head over to the Paragraph Styles panel, select Headline. Head over to the Options bar and click on the Character Styles, click None. Right-click in the text frame and select Fill with Placeholder Text. I'll make this title shorter. Duplicate the frame by pressing Shift Option and drag down. Head over to the Paragraph Styles panel, select the Intro Style. Let's add a little bit more text here. And let's adjust the placement of the intro. Let's duplicate this text frame and we'll work on that a little bit later. Using the rectangle tool, create a rectangle that measures 11 centimeters by 9.75. Let's place this in the four columns. Select none for the fill and stroke colors. Press command D to place an image. Select the group of people dining, click open. Zoom out. Using the direct selection tool, we can resize the image. Press Option Shift to resize evenly. Let's move this slightly. Now let's work on the copy. Extend the text frame to the uh, bottom margin. Select Copy on the Paragraph Styles panel. Let's add more copy here. Right click, fill with placeholder text. Select the text frame with the selection tool and press Command B to open the text frame options window. Set the number of columns to 2 and gutter to 0.5. Click OK. Click on the first paragraph. Head over to the paragraph styles panel and select the drop cap style. And this will add a nice beginning to the article. Press Command A to select all the text on both columns. Head over to the options bar. Click on the Justify with Last Line, Align the Left button. Perfect. Select the Rectangle tool and create a sidebar in the last two columns. Get rid of the stroke color. Head over to the Swatches panel. Set the tint to 50% to make the rectangle just slightly lighter. Select the Text tool and click on the rectangle to convert it into a frame. While selecting the frame, press Command B to open the text frame options, and here we will add an inset spacing. So that will be a margin around the rectangle. Use 0.5 centimeters for the inset spacing. Make sure that it is all around. Click OK. And here you can see there is a, a small margin so the text won't go right up to the edges. Let's copy and paste a headline. Using the Paragraph Styles panel, select Sidebar to style the headline. Head over to the Options bar. Here you can choose to either use all caps or you can head over to Type, Change Case, Title Case. That will capitalize every word on the headline. Let's insert some more text and make this copy. And using the Swatches panel, we will turn this into white. Select the Ellipse tool from the toolbar. Hold down Option Shift to create an even circle that starts from the center and stop right at the margin. Select No Color for the Stroke and Fill color. 
While selecting the element, press Command D to place an image. Select the pomegranate image and click Open. And let's resize it using the direct selection tool. Open the text wrap panel. If you don't have it open, head over to Window, Text Wrap. While selecting the circle, click on the Wrap Around Bounding Box button and set the offset to 0.5 centimeters on all sides. And there we have it. We've created some space to have the picture there. It feels like we need some um, delineation between the image and the background. So set the stroke weight to three points and on the swatches panel, select paper. That looks better. For the last two pages, you can copy and paste the elements that we have already placed on this first page that we worked on, but I encourage you to try a different layout using the six columns that we created. I will give you a couple of examples so you can see how you can lay out the rest of the newsletter. Start by multiplying the headline and the intro. To make this page different, we will run the headline and the intro across the whole page. Duplicate the copy and run it from margin to margin, but keep the two columns. Running copy from side to side on this size of a page will be too uncomfortable to read. So let's keep the two columns. Add an image and this time place it on the very far right so it creates a balance with the image on the opposite page. Instead of creating a sidebar on the side here, we'll leave a space at the bottom and create a small article section. And this article can be either a very small article or it can be something related to the same topic as the one that we have at the top here. We will use the six columns that we created at the beginning that we can see right now behind to create a three column article. For a more polished look, you can add strokes in between the columns. This will make it look more professional. And here we have our interior pages. While they're not the same layout, they have the same wireframe and that's what helps it look like it's very organized, it's easy to the eyes, and it's easy to follow. We have two images on opposite sides, and this creates a really nice visual balance without having any symmetry. Now let's get to work on the last page. Duplicate the headline and the intro on the last page. We will add an image under these two elements that will run from margin to margin. This will help create some contrast um, compared to the other images in the newsletter. For this page, we will use four columns for the copy. This size is still very legible as a column. It's not too wide. And then we can add a sidebar under the image and to the right of the copy. And this place is really useful if you want to add some kind of supportive information that also has the same theme as the article on this page. And there you have it. This is a monthly newsletter template in InDesign that can be used as a weekly newsletter template as well. It is super easy to edit because we used the layers panel, master pages, and color swatches, and the paragraph styles panel. So if your users need to change the font or need to change the colors, they can do so very, very easily. From all of us at Envato Touch Plus, we hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.